Oh my gosh. That's a big one. Okay. See? Oh wow. Fish is still pretty hot. These hooked really good. Okay. <laughs> Today, I want to talk about your soft plastic crawls. And not only that, I want to talk about three big mistakes that a lot of guys make with their soft plastic crawls. So stay tuned. It's going to be a good one. This video is brought to you by sportsmansoutfitters.com. At Sportsman's Outfitters, not only do they have your fishing needs, but they have pretty much all your outdoor needs. And not only that, you can get it for some of the best prices that you're going to find across the internet. So down below in the description, click that link for sportsmansoutfitters.com for all all your outdoor needs. The soft plastic crawl. I think that this is one of the most used and most popular soft plastics that we have, but honestly, it's probably the least talked about when you go online. You hear a lot about Texas rigs, but they're not specifically talking about a crawl. You hear a lot about plastic worms, not the crawl. It just seems like the crawl is just kind of overlooked at times when it comes to content creation. And today I want to talk about the crawl because the crawl is it's, it's something that almost every angler has already in their tackle box. So let's go ahead and dive into the big mistakes guys make with a crawl. One of the biggest mistakes that guys make when fishing soft plastic crawls is thinking that all of these different branded crawls are created equal. And really, this couldn't be further from the truth. If you look at a lot of the different crawls on the market from each brand, you know, right here is a Berkeley Chigger Crawl. Right here, I have a Strike King Rage Crawl. This is a Zoom Speed Crawl. If you look at a lot of these crawls, they're all very similar. They're typically about three or four inches in length, and they typically have two pinchers on them that kind of flap as you reel them through the water. So a lot of times people may think that, well, a crawl is a crawl, right? They all kind of do the exact same thing. And although they do have kind of a similar motion in the water, I'm telling you right now that all crawls are not created equal. Now, obviously a lot of these crawls are going to come in different colors. Now, I don't always believe that colors are a huge thing in bass fishing. I do think that there are sometimes a color makes a difference but one thing that i think makes a huge difference in bass fishing is water displacement and vibration i think sometimes bass will really hone in on certain vibrations better than they will others for instance in dirtier water you typically want more vibration you want more water displacement to really help the bass hone in on those baits. While in clear water, sometimes you don't want any vibration at all. Now, those are just kind of some guidelines. That's not necessarily like a hard truth, but for instance, if you take the three crawls that I'm holding right now, again, Strike King Rage Crawl, Zoom Speed Crawl, and the Berkeley Chigger Crawl, these are probably my favorite crawls on the market. But each of these crawls actually put off a little bit different vibration. The easiest way to kind of figure this out is put this crawl on a Texas rig, cast it out there and either reel it in or work it across the bottom. One thing that you're going to realize is the Berkeley Chigger Crawl actually has a tremendous amount of more drag when you're simply reeling it through the water. It has a little bit more kick to it than the Rage Crawl does and the Speed Crawl. That extra drag that you're going to feel when you're reeling that through the water is simply because more water is catching on those crawls and it's putting off a bigger displacement. So a lot of times, if I'm fishing muddier water, I actually prefer to use the chigger crawl because of that. Now, I'm not saying that these other crawls aren't going to work in muddy water, but what I am saying is that these crawls have different vibrations and sometimes the bass want one over another. Now, something that the Strike King Rage Crawl does is it will actually start to flap its little pinchers before the chigger crawl does. Sometimes you cast that chigger crawl out and it's almost like the pinchers kind of just get kind of stuck for a minute before they really 
start going. The rage curl, on the other hand, pretty much as soon as it hits the water, it's really starting to kick right away. So sometimes if you're fishing a lure really slow, maybe you're fishing a jig really slow across the bottom and you have a crawl in the back, sometimes that's why I like to go with the rage crawls because I know it's gonna kick even with those subtle movements that I'm making when it's on the bottom. Now a speed crawl, I think it was probably one of the more original crawls that's out there on the market and it doesn't have quite the kick that the other baits do so sometimes I tend to use the speed crawl when I'm fishing in really clear water. Sometimes I don't want a lot of commotion in clear water. Sometimes I like that subtle action. So that's why I will pick up the speed crawl when it comes to fishing it in clear water. The other time I like that speed crawl is when I'm fishing around heavily pressured bodies of water. If you're going down a bank and there's been a lot of other anglers on that bank, you know, simply picking up a speed crawl as opposed to another crawl that has a ton of kick to it can really help you to get a lot lot more bites when those other crawls aren't going to get those same bites. Now these aren't the only crawls out there on the market. There's a ton of different crawls, but my point is make sure you know the differences in all the crawls that you use. The second mistake that a lot of anglers make when it comes to fishing a crawl is doing a technique that's called swimming a crawl. A lot of us know about fishing a swim jig. A swim jig is one of the most popular techniques to catch a bass no matter where you go across the country. You can catch them in shallow water with a swim jig. You can catch them in a little bit deeper water with a swim jig. But a lot of guys aren't out there just swimming a Texas rig crawl. And I'm telling you what, this is a great technique to catch bass. If you guys have ever been out there, there are some days when you're fishing a swim jig that the bass just tend to miss that bait or they're not getting that bait or you're swinging on them and missing. And anytime that is happening to me, instead of changing colors and things like that of my swim jig, that's when I'm actually just gonna rig up a Texas rigged crawl and I'm gonna work it and use it the exact same way that I would a swim jig. Now, every time I do this, it seems like my hookup rate just goes through the roof. And I actually kind of learned this by accident. I remember fishing a lake and I was actually just pitching a Texas rig crawl and some lay downs. And I actually caught a bass when I was reeling the bait back to me. So I actually just started doing that exact same thing. I started casting the crawl and reeling it. And I started catching a lot of fish by simply just swimming a crawl. A swim jig is already pretty finessey, but if you swim a Texas rig crawl, it's even a little bit more finessey. And sometimes I think it can even outproduce that swim jig. Not all the time. There's going to be times where it literally doesn't matter which one you do, but try swimming a crawl because it's a great technique that a lot of guys aren't doing and it's just something a little bit different that the bass you're trying to catch may have never seen before. The third big mistake that a lot of guys make with fishing a crawl is actually not fishing a crawl during this certain period of the year where I think that it will almost outproduce anything out there. I really wanna try to explain this the best that I can because honestly, I, I don't know if I can like explain how important it is to do this. Towards the end of summer and kind of getting into fall, what happens a lot across the lakes in our country is a lot of the young of the year shad are everywhere. Literally everywhere that you go, you're gonna see millions of shad and they are this big. You know, they are an inch long. The bass will feed heavily on those little shad and it's very hard to kind of mimic that small of a little shad. The best way to actually mimic those little little tiny shad is to take a crawl lure like the one that I have right here and you're actually going to just dip the pinchers in some sort of dye. Now I prefer chartreuse most of the time. Basically what you're doing is you're taking a portion of that lure and you're kind of emphasizing it for the bass to be able to see. Now it doesn't necessarily have to be a crawl. You could probably do this with other lures. You could probably just dip the tail of a Kitex swim bait or maybe the tips of a beaver style bait but I have found that a crawl works extremely well whether you're just fishing it on the bottom or whether you're just swimming it you may be thinking to yourself how in the world does that mimic one of those shad and 
I, guys, I'm just telling you, you have to try this. If you put that pincher or that crawl in that die and you cast it out there in the water and you reel it back, those chartreuse pinchers, when they're flapping right next to each other in the water, a lot of times to a bass, what I found out is it just looks like two of those tiny little shads swimming right next to each other. Because you've only dyed the pinchers, they may not even see the rest of the body. And those little pinchers, I'm telling you, they just look like shad to a bass. Like I said, you really just have to try this. The next time you have a billion shad in your lake, dip the pinchers of your crawl in some sort of dye. It's gonna get bit two, three, four times better than if you were to flip the exact same style crawl without dipped pinchers. If you guys wanna see another video that I did that's similar to this one on Texas rigs, you can actually click this video right here. You're gonna find out more about Texas rigs. I hope you enjoyed the video. Comment below, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video.